Hi, my name is Manuel Ikhani. I'm Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The topic of today's discussions is clinical application of MOPs for macro osteoperforation. If you remember from the last three sessions that we spent on MOPs, we talk about the biology of MOPs, the misunderstanding about MOPs, and then a step by a step how we can apply MOPs inside the map. Today we're going to concentrate on what are the clinical applications for MOPs. Unfortunately, MOPs is known only for accelerated orthodontics. That actually is not the main usage for MOPs. MOPs has many clinical applications. The most important one is improving difficult movements. For example, you having a patient that you need to close the extraction space. Somehow you cannot apply implants in that area. However, that extraction space has been there for a long time. And we know that when extraction space has been there for a long time, the quality of the bone changes, it becomes denser, is very difficult to close the space. Rate of resorption of the bone is very, very slow. And this causes more side effects because if you move the tooth in that space, you can tilt the tooth instead of moving it bodily and also you can cause root resorption. By application of MOP, you can increase the rate of bone remodeling in that area and therefore provide a better quality of the bone for movement of the tooth. It not only increase the rate of the movement, but also improve the type of tooth movement. You will have more bodily movement than just tilting. Another uh, clinical scenario is that you can improve the difficult movement is operating in the molars. We know when we are operating the molars, especially in the areas that cortical bone in the distal side is very dense, the possibility of resorption at the cervical part of the molar increase significantly. By application of the MOP, we can improve the quality of the bone, decrease the bone density, and we prevent the resorption in the cervical area of the molar when we are operating the molar. The second category for application of the MOPs is changing the outcome of your biomechanics. In orthodontics, any times that you apply a force, you have action and reaction forces that are equal. Our anchor unit receive the reaction force, why the target unit received the action force. But most of the time we want to move the target unit more than we move the anchor unit. By application of MOP around the target unit, we can increase the probability of movement of the target unit over anchor unit, even though the action and reaction forces are the same. On the same category, we need to introduce a new concept and that is biological anchorage. As I said, for the anchor unit, most of the time, we do not want the teeth to significantly move. So we use a lot of mechanical tools that we have to decrease the rate of tooth movement of anchor unit. But what happened in instead of decreasing the rate of movement of anchor unit, we increase the rate of movement of target unit. That produces a similar result. So any times that you have a, a very particular situation that your anchor unit really cannot move, prepare your anchor unit mechanically, but at the same time you can increase the rate of tooth movement of target unit with MOPs and have a better result. The third category is that we should use the MOPs to decrease the risk of damage to the tooth structure. In some of the movements that we have, for example, the root movement, root needs to move in a dense bone for a long distance. The main factor of root resorption is bone densities. That's the reason the rate of bone resorption, especially in the adult, is more than the children that they don't have a dense bone. In this condition, if you are applying MOP in the direction of the root movement, by increasing the rate of the bone remodeling, you can decrease the possibility of root resorption. However, you need to apply the MOPs frequently to make sure that really you are decreasing the bone density, not just once. Need to be done during the root movement. 
One of the main questions is if MOP increase the number of the osteoclast, wouldn't that cause more root resorption? No, the number of the osteoclast is not important for root resorption. How much we delay the tooth movement is the main factors that cause root resorption. The more dense bone, the more delay in removal of necrotic tissue, the osteoclast that they come to help, they have time to not only attack the bone, but attack the tooth. And that's called resorption. On the other hand, when you have increase in bone remodeling, increase in the number of osteoclasts, very soon the path of movement clear, therefore the osteoclasts do not have enough time to attack the tooth. That's the reason in children, we do not have that much root resorption and is adult because the bone density is less. The possibility that the tooth press to the bone for a long time, have a prolonged necrotic tissue is less than the adult. So let's summarize the discussion today. There is three main clinical applications for MOPs. First, improving difficult movement. Second, changing the biomechanical outcome. And third, decreasing the risk of damage to the tooth structure. I hope you enjoyed this session of CITOR channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to press the like button.